11 o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, the Board of Health members that are present are Margaret Mastrangelo uh, and myself, Susan Mosler, our Administrative Assistant, Peter Lore, uh, our liaison from the Select Board, James Nevinsmith, and we have some uh, guests uh, I see on the screen here. I welcome everybody. Uh, Greg Mish is still out on medical leave, and uh, we are hopefully uh, await his uh, quick quick return. Um, I guess we will start out by uh, uh, Margaret could make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Yes. Um, okay. So everyone hopefully has seen the minutes from um, I think it was last week actually. So that would be. Um, uh, the 17th, all those in favor? Okay. So Mastrangelo, yes, Mosler, yes. So we have approved the minutes. Uh, I would like to, um, uh, are the people who are on the meeting, uh, would you, do you wanna make a comment? Do you have things that you would like to say to the Board of Health? Okay, so let me, uh, we're gonna move the, agenda around a little bit so people don't have to wait around while we approve permits and uh, take care of business that perhaps they're not quite as interested in. Uh, and we will um, take uh, public comments. Please try to keep them to two minutes. Uh, and uh, we will maintain a, an atmosphere of uh, decency and uh, the common good. Uh, uh, Emily, do you want to go ahead? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I just want to say thank you first. For, oh, there are two Emily's. Sorry. Um, so I apologize, Emily Webster. Sorry about oh, that. Sorry. Go for it. Name on the screen. OK. Emily Pfeiffer, go ahead. Oh, OK. Hi. Um, so just starting with thanks. Um, you have a hard job, especially now. So just uh, expressing appreciation for oh, all that you do. It. Thank you. Um, I, I sent a note ahead. I'm just here to ask that you maintain mask mandates in schools. Um, I, I won't take a ton of time, um, but can provide evidence. It's been working. The schools have been doing an incredible job and it's great to see that it's working. Let's let it keep working. It'll get so much easier when we can open windows and they can spend more time outside. But this is how we keep the numbers going in the right direction. And speaking as someone who's got scary stuff in the household, um, I would be staring down the barrel of trying to figure out where to put my kid if they were in a building with unmasked people. So um, I'm here to beg for you to continue it. That's it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I, I do just want to say that, um, you know, we do read all the emails that people send in and listen to the messages if you've left a voicemail and we appreciate uh, everyone's input. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Emily. Hi. Webster. Yeah, hi. Hi, um, I'm Emily and I'm a parent to a child in Hadley schools. Um, I thank you for your work in unprecedented times. I know these aren't easy, easy decisions. Um, I'm here tonight to ask the board to explicitly uh, release schools from their guidance. Um, schools are controlled environments and that they have information about the risk profile of their specific population, including things like vaccination rates. They have mitigation member me measures like ventilation and universal testing access. And also unlike a restaurant or a store, schools are not open to the general public. Uh, schools must be able to look to DESE and in combination with other known metrics and mitigation, make decisions that best serve the very specific population and their needs, namely children and young people. Children are disproportionately burdened with pandemic restrictions while they are simultaneously the most harmed by long days, sometimes more than six hours a day of constant masking. Releasing schools from your mandates doesn't mean they can't look to you for guidance, but it does mean that they're not bound by one size fits all masking approach. It means they can make decisions from a holistic perspective where they can also look to guiding bodies with expertise in schools, education, and the data and science specific to this population. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to, I see, a, I just see names here. I see a Kathy, a Mariana, and a Greer Bombardier. Would, would any of those want to speak? <laughs> Kathy, go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, I sent you a letter this morning stating my um, concerns. Um, I do think the children have been the most hurt by having put masks on their face all day long. We as adults need to recognize that and do the right thing by the children. Um, I cited a bunch of guidelines that I've been following. The CDC does not have any proof that masking does work. You can go on their website. There's not one mask that fits all and there's no way of, of telling whether that works. I know the other person said that it's working, but honestly, go to the CDC guidelines website and you'll see that there is no proof. There's no evidence. There's no scientific data. There's no one size fit all. So I think they need to be released. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mariana? Yay, nay? No, okay. Uh, Greer Bombardier, would you like to speak? I'm, I'm not hearing anything. Okay, so um, I, don't, I don't think we don't have anybody else on the meeting, correct? I, I want every, anybody who wants to speak, I want them to have a chance to speak. So I don't. I appreciate I, that. May I speak again if there's no one else who needs a first? Sure, time? go for it. Thank you. I'll be so quick. That's okay. The CDC has been very clear. The recent guidance says use better masks, you know, not not stop masking. I, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I realize I'm speaking to people who understand it better than you, I do. You but are speaking to people. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, okay. No, Emily Webster, I think, had her hand raised. No, sorry, that was an accident. Okay. Sorry, I, I put it down. Sorry. You're just waving to us. Hi. Okay. So we will uh, move forward with it. Hold on one second here. Um, and I'm just going to read a statement because I do better when I read something than when I just try to uh, speak. And then we will, uh, the Board of Health will take a vote on. Uh, the continuation or, or lifting of the mask mandate. Uh, the state of Massachusetts, departments of public health and elementary and secondary education are shifting policy to reflect a move away from preventing COVID-19 infections and toward controlling the severity of illness, hospitalization rate and death rate resulting from COVID-19 infections. This is reflected in their recent policy statements that support the widespread lifting of mask mandates and other public health measures that were aimed at reducing infection rates. While some will agree with this policy shift and some will disagree, the Hadley Board of Health will support the state public health institutions and Department of Education with the understanding that the COVID pandemic is ever changing and merits frequent ongoing assessment of public health measures and policies. We have received many communications from parents of, second, of school children and from some of our school children themselves who express concerns about lifting the mask mandate right when students will be returning to the classroom after the vacation. For this reason, the Board of Health will vote tonight on lifting the mask mandate for the general public as of March 1st, 2022, and lifting the mask mandate for our public schools as of March 6th, 2022. Please note that lifting of the Hadley Board of Health issued mask mandate does not supersede the state and federal requirements regarding schools. And I read, passengers two years of age and older and drivers must wear a mask on buses or vans operated by public or private school systems, including early uh, care and education child care programs, mm -hmm. subject to the exclusions and exemptions in CDC's order. Additionally, school health offices are health care settings, and as such, masks will continue to be worn by all individuals in these offices. While the Board of Health knows that wearing a mask slows transmission of the virus, we also understand that unlike two years ago, we now have vaccines that will lessen the severity once an individual becomes infected. In addition, there are multiple medications available to treat COVID-19 infection. They are available to the general public, 
and they are safe and effective, thus lowering the severity of illness, hospitalization rate, and death rate of those infected. For those who are immunocompromised and unable to make adequate antibodies following vaccination, there is now available antibody injections that will give protection to these vulnerable individuals for up to six months. If you are concerned about becoming infected with the COVID-19 virus, the Board of Health encourages you to wear a tight-fitting N95 mask when indoors in public spaces. Avoid crowded indoor spaces as much as possible. The Board of Health will continue to monitor the COVID-19 pandemic and institute public health measures that are deemed necessary in the future. So let's, uh, yes, go ahead, Margaret. Well, yeah, I just want to, you know, say a few things. Um, this, this is a very difficult decision. Um, and one that, uh, you know, listening to parents and uh, getting guidance from the state on this, um, it, it is, it, it, it's been something that I have been really wrestling with. Um, you know, I, I certainly feel that um, it makes sense not, you know, to have the school kids continue wearing their masks for at least, you know, whatever, I don't know, March 7th, whatever date you just mentioned, you know, because I am concerned about any uh, increase in um, infectivity that we might see as a result of coming back from school vacation. So I, I actually support that. I, I like that idea. Um, it's one way of trying to acknowledge the risks that are there while at this as well simultaneously also trying to follow along with the guidelines set by the state. Um, you know, I, I spent some time on the WHO website and the CDC website, as I'm sure many of you do as well. And certainly the, the case numbers are dropping. I, I don't remember what those statistics are any, anymore. I, you know, they were quite significant. Um, I know that in our county, the um, rate of cases has declined by 27.4% and the rate of hospital, hospitalizations have, has declined by over 70%. Um, and I'm also aware that, you know, we've got a lot of other um, surrounding towns who have lifted their mask mandates, which makes it, makes it I think, even difficult for Hadley to continue without, um, yeah, without there being some sort of general consensus as well. Um, and, and this is where I, I would say that I am disappointed by, um, by the sort of lack of uniformity that, that we have in, in setting policy, not by us, I'm saying, but, but just in general in this, in, you know, in the, in the country that, uh, you know, it, it really falls on local boards of health to make decisions. Um, rather than from a, from a, you know, from the CDC on down. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I think it's moving towards that time to, to lift mask mandates. Having said that, that doesn't mean that I personally won't be wearing a mask, I, I just will. Um, and, I, and I think it's important for um, the public to know that this issue hasn't gone away and uh, it's not likely to go away for a while. We don't know yet about um, other variants of concern, but I would like to reassure people that we will continue to follow this very, very closely. And, you know, I personally do not have a problem reinstituting um, mask mandates uh, if there does become a variant, another variant of concern. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I just I just very briefly want to add to that, and then I, I want to move on to a vote. But um, from my perspective, this is not about uh, cases dropping. Uh, we have 
uh, we are still in the high transmission zone uh, in Hampshire County, as are most of the counties out uh, here in Massachusetts. So uh, I think the chances of getting infected are, are very high. Uh, I, I acknowledge that. I, what I am uh, looking at, as I said at the beginning of the statement, is a shift, that there is a shift there's a shift from infection prevention. We are moving away from that and as a state and as a country, uh, whether we like that or not, that's the way the wind is blowing. And uh, you know, once you shift away from that, uh, you know, the case counts and, and that type of, of thing, those, those numbers are not so, they're not so interesting to a lot of public health uh, people anymore. What's, what's the focus is, is on severity of illness, hospitalizations, and death. Uh, and we are looking at uh, vaccinations, which lower uh, severity of illness, decrease hospitalizations, decrease death rate. And we have uh, medications now that are available. And, uh, for better or worse, uh, that is really the shift that is occurring. And that is the rationale behind uh, my support of uh, lifting the mask mandate. I, I, I don't believe that, uh, that I, I do believe that cases will go up. We know that masking prevents, you know, mitigates the chance of, of getting infected. There's no there's no way around that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I would like just to be on the record here. Uh, so uh, let's move to a vote. Uh, the the motion would be uh, to uh, lift to rescind the mask mandate uh, for the general public in the town of Hadley as of March first and to uh, lift, uh, rescind the mask mandate uh, for our school children uh, as of uh, March 6th. So that Friday, I believe it is March 5th, that would still be a masking day. Um, so that's, that's the motion. Uh, and do we have a second? Okay, so let's vote on it. Uh, Mastrangelo? Mastrangelo, yes. Okay, and Mosler says yes. So uh, the mask mandate will be uh, lifted as, as described. And um, I appreciate everyone who has come on to the meeting. Uh, it, it's, it's hard. I, I, I don't, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult situation. And which we try to do the best that we can. Okay, thank you. I Jenny. appreciate that. I don't have children, but I see the children and it breaks my heart. It really does. Okay. Uh, Thank Jay, you. Did, you. did you want to speak? You're on, you're muted, Jane. Is there any way you can put something in addition to that that says this does not mean you do not have to wear a mask. Individuals have a choice to wear a mask if they wish. Of course. Uh, you and know. I think I think it would help if it were spelled out. Well, we'll we'll put something up on the website about our recommendations. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I had made a note of that. All right. Um, the next item is permits. Well, actually, oh. new new business. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll take that, uh, Margaret. Thanks. Um, so in terms of new business, we did receive um, a permit application <clears throat> um, yesterday afternoon along with the, uh, the fee. It came in from uh, a company uh, known as Harvestone Artesian Bakery. They're located in Shrewsbury. And uh, they want to participate in the Hadley Farmers Market that I believe is in the Hampshire Mall. 
And uh, so um, again, they they completed their application appropriately and uh, they sent in a uh, their fee as well. I received uh, all of that yesterday afternoon. So um, I, I just need uh, you guys to go ahead and approve that so I can send them their permit by way of email. Um, you know, if not tomorrow, it'll be on Monday. Peter, can you tell me again who, who that was? Yeah, it's Harvest Stone. It's H-A-R-V-E-S-T-O-N-E, -E, Artesian Bakery. Thank you. And, and again, they're in Shutesbury, Massachusetts. Okay. So I, I just need you guys to approve it. Okay, All right, make, let's... make a motion to approve. No, second it. Vote to approve. Nestrangelo, yes. Mosler, yes. Okay, thanks. Margaret, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I, I mispronounce your last name frequently. I, I apologize. Okay. Nestrangelo. Okay, all right. Um, next item. Oh, do we have an update on the, um, on a contract person at all? Do we, anything uh, Are you talking about the health agent? Yes. Oh, um, yeah, the, um, for those that don't know this, um, we are looking to contract uh, with an outside party to do um, the duties of a health agent uh, for the town of Hadley, uh, starting in March, uh, running through the end of June. Uh, we have a candidate in mind that we've interviewed. We're very happy with, uh, her credentials and the way she interviewed. And uh, so we, we, we plan on moving forward. Um, the, uh, we kind of have a verbal agreement in terms of compensation and so forth. Um, my understanding is that uh, the town administrator will be meeting with the select board next Monday to review this person and to get their approval. Um, from there, then it's a matter of um, sitting down with that individual and executing the um, a uh, scope of work document and getting her started on things like inspecting uh, local food inspect uh, food at establishments, um, the indoor swimming pools at the hotels and motels in Hadley, um, dealing with um, tenant complaints, um, as well as uh, uh, building issues whenever there's a you know, a uh, frozen pipe and, you know, uh, people can no longer inhabit their, their building and, uh, you know, and, and things like that, anything that a health agent would be doing. And again, this candidate um, is uh, very well qualified. She has all the credentials. Uh, she has a master's degree in uh, public, uh, public health from the University of Massachusetts. Um, she knows Hadley very well, having grown up here. Um, and uh, with that, I'll stop talking. Yeah. Um, except that um, it's going to be on the select board agenda for Wednesday next week, not Monday. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. If I said Monday, uh, you're absolutely correct. I apologize. But yeah, Wednesday, uh, March 2nd. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's highly qualified. Uh, and she and she really seemed to know all sorts of uh, she seemed to be thoroughly versed in everything. So no matter if we were talking septic systems or, um, you know, remedial plans for restaurants and businesses that weren't up to standard. Um, yeah, anyway, she seemed very knowledgeable and uh, thorough in her understanding. Mm -hmm. Jane, do you think we need a member of Board of Health on that select board meeting or that might not be helpful? It might be useful to have you available in case there were questions, but okay. I don't think you should plan to speak otherwise. Good. Okay. Just text me if you want me to come on. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, any other business then? All right. Yeah, think. you know, actually, I do have something to raise. Jane, I know you would. We had talked last time about senior housing and, you know, sort of the, the you know the housing and who who oversees stuff. Um, that was one thing we did discuss with her. 
and you know it 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 sort of what sort of what came out of this was um, it really depends on where you know if if there's a big gap say in the doorway where mice etc can get through that will definitely be a landlord issue uh, if it's instead because of um, uh, accumulation of things within the house then that becomes a tenant issue. So there's, you know, the, you know, the, and, and I'm sure there could be some very gray areas in between all of that. So um, that would be one of the things that would be a priority for um, the contract person to address. I'm pleased to report that enough pressure was put on the landlord that they had an exterminator there today. Oh, great. Jane, did, did you ever find out anything more about who is in charge? I mean, who- under Still working on that. Okay, it's complicated, right? It's very complicated. We try, I tried to deal with it. I just, I, I, just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, so it's convoluted. All right, is the lawyer involved in figuring, helping figure that out or? Um, not yet. Okay. We don't right. have quite the details I need. All right, well, we'll leave it to you, but thank you for, uh, for pursuing that. Okay. All right, any other issues? No. All right, then I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Oh, we actually should set a, a next date. Oh, uh, Margaret, we yeah. will, um, will you, we have to let the town administrator know, or who do we have to let know about what we've decided, what we voted on? Tonight? Oh, I'll, I'll send something off uh, tomorrow. All right, make sure, yeah, I guess make sure Jennifer as well gets yep. a copy. Yep, She's yep. usually wanting to uh to see yes. those that type thank of you. thing yeah thank you for reminding me of that yeah okay all right um if there are no further comments i make a motion that we adjourn can we yeah, can we talk about next meeting first yeah sorry right. Uh, the next meeting date. Well, let's see that. Let me get my calendar here. Because I, because I know one of you is traveling in March. Yeah, me. Uh, what about uh, March tenth? How does that work for folks? Perfect. All That's right. fine. March March tenth, Thursday, March tenth, seven p.m. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Are you voting to adjourn? Yes, we're voting. Yes, oh. we're voting okay. to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. It passed.